everybody, welcome to show. This is Darren Aline. This is my show. We have another special Q&A of answering your questions. And this is super important to me because you are asking them and we get many questions from you. And when we find ones that people ask a lot of, we want to zero in on that. And this one today is a great question. Um, we're going to dive into the mysteries of sugar. And more importantly, are sugars from fruit bad for us? And the other, the other part of the question is the person wants to get leaner, but are the carbohydrates and the fructose and the sugars from that going to keep, keep them fat or, or even produce more fat? This is a great question because sugar has been demonized, but of course, isolated sugar is, and we'll find out, a lot different than fruit sugar. And there's some amazing, great science around what that is. So let's dive in. So there was a study, and I'm going to call out my good buddy, uh, Dr. Michael McGregor at nutritionfacts.org. So there's a lot of great da data that I pulled from them. I always do my own research and then I circle back around to see what he's come up with. And I will put that link in the show notes as well. There was a fascinating study when compared with consuming sugar and then comparing that to adding so then they so when the control was you add sugar to water and you drink it and you see the blood spike and then you see it drop and then it goes below and then and then what hap actually happens me metabolically is because it drops below set point when you've blasted your blood sugar you're then your body actually fills your body full of fat to counteract trying to get the energy back up again. So that that's when you're using isolated added sugar. Um, in this study, uh, it showed that when you just add um, fruit to it, like a slurry of fruit with the fiber, that it actually doesn't drop below set point. It still goes up a little bit, but doesn't go up as much, and it doesn't drop off as much. And then they did another part of the study, which was equally fascinating. So you're thinking, okay, it's the fiber that slows that that slows the metabolism down and slows the 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 uptake or the the up and down of the sugar. But in fact, it wasn't just the fiber. It was actually the phytochemicals that are in the fruit that help to regulate the spike uh, and, and also the drop off. So it wasn't perfect, but it was better than the control. So not only is the fiber good in the fruit, but also just the phytonutrients that are in the fruit that is helping to stabilize blood sugar. So very fascinating stuff. Like I said, if you want to dive into that study, we're going to put it in the show notes. And also, I want you to check out nutritionfacts.org, all based in data. And Dr. Michael Greger was before everyone else looking at real nutritional data so that we can understand it, right? So that you can listen to it and understand the data and them combing through so much research and getting out to the public. He was the OG, right? So super grateful to promote nutritionfacts.org. It's a nonprofit. It's not compromised by any other data. Some of the, the other data that I found was health benefits of whole fruits and fruit sugars. So substituting added sugars with fruit-based products um, provides actual health benefits due to the bioactive compounds and fiber in the fruits, reducing, in this study, reducing risk of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. So 
There was a study called Sugars with Fruits in Developing Value-Added Food Products, a review by, there was about three, looks like three researchers back in the, as early as June 30th, 2020, in, from the International Journal of Nutrition, Pharmacology, and Neurological Diseases. So the regular consumption of whole fruits as they found, is associated with the reduced prevalence of obesity, abdominal obesity, abdominal fat, metabolic syndrome abnormalities. And this is, again, this was a group, a cross-sectional study that was collected between 2012 and 2015 by the National Health Nutritional uh, examination survey boards of participants, a total of 10,460 adults, for over 4,000 men and 6,000 women. So this is nothing to shake a stick at between the ages of 19 and 64. And the results were fantastic. The, the participants uh, consumed whole fruit daily, uh, was 32.6% whereas 52% of them consumed fruit juice. Um, the average intake of total sugar was about 14, actually close to 15% of their total calories. So they weren't consuming all fruit. It was a, a good amount of healthy, you know, a little less than 20% of their total calories from fruit, but it definitely uh, showed that the frequency of fruit juice consumption showed, number one, no association with obesity, abdominal obesity, and metabolic syndrome. So the frequency of whole fruit consumption was associated with reduced prevalence of this obesity, metabolic syndrome, etc. So whole fruits contribute to better weight management, gastro uh, intestinal health for sure because of not only the prebiotics in some of the antioxidants as they're finding they, they can perform prebiotic activities the anthocyanins proanthocyanins the color of the fruit which is very fascinating and interesting but also the fiber itself was very powerful and that's not surprising but it's always good to see the data um, there is a potential again of downsize, uh, the downsides of just focusing on the fruit juices. And that typically is without the fiber. So it's the concentration of juice. Now, if you're compromised already, if you're pre, pre diabetic or diabetic, this may affect you more because your, your insulin sensitivity is already off, off and, and challenged. So you need to be aware of that and consult your doctor. But the great thing is fruit uh, with fiber, whole fruit, fruit consumption uh, is the opposite. It can help stabilize blood sugar uh, and, and combat some of these blood spikes. Again, these are complex metabolic sy systems with now we're finding with the antioxidant capacity, the phytonutrients, as well as the fiber. So there's a lot going on um, uh, there. So as we found through about, I uh, looked at about six different studies, five to six different studies, and the general consensus is, not surprising, whole fruit sugars generally offer healthy, healthier benefits, including better weight management, and reduce risk of chronic disease. So, uh, however, the consumption and overconsumption of fruit juices, I mean, every so often, no big deal. Think of that as medicine if you're looking for, you know, you know, it's different than vegetable juices that don't have the same level of sugars unless it's carrots or beets or things like that. Um, but if you're not insulin sensitive, then you might be okay for a period of time consuming those higher amounts. So I, I don't worry too much about that stuff, but I also don't over consume that concentration. I would rather eat 
my carrots and eat my beets and and my juices. I I, I kind of focus on the green juices itself. But there's also some great, and I'll just add this into it, some several double-blind, randomized, controlled trials uh, that explore different effects uh, and positive effects of whole fruit sugars on health. And we got to understand, if you're demonizing sugar, um, you need to be aware of what it is that you're talking about. If it's added white sugar, yes, it's not good, (laughs) period. It's going to throw your whole body out of whack, especially from the insulin sensitivity, and you're going to sprint towards towards metabolic issues without a doubt. But sugar, again, I want to emphasize this, sugar is not bad when it's in its whole food form. You shouldn't be consuming, that's the start of ultra-processed creation of the detriment of all humanity anyway. White sugar is one of the biggest manipulators of our senses and they did it for a reason creating hyper palatability so we are sensitive to sugar because it's extremely good for us in nature when you find a date you find an apple you find an orange you eat a watermelon hell i just consumed a whole watermelon this morning uh when you find that nature it is one of the most life-giving things you can do and that you can eat and it's not creating metabolic uh, damage. In fact, it's the opposite. So a double-blind, randomized, controlled trial showed that uh, a study on dietary sugar from fruit on cognitive performance and reaction time, it found that glucose intake improved cognitive performance and reaction time compared to uh, the placebo, saccharin, and and other things. Um, also, the impact on plasma glucose. So, randomized crossover controlled trial intervention study investigated the effect of. In this case, they used sea buckthorn, whole fruit puree on plasma glucose in people with impaired glucose regulation the study concluded that in this case c buckthorn puree reduced fasting plasma glucose levels how great is that body weight in children so through many of the double bind uh, randomized control trials we can we now can see the evidence that whole fruit sugars and their extracts can have beneficial effects on cognitive performance, plasma glucose, so what's in their blood, and um, also uh, body weight management, metabolic markers, all of that stuff. There's some great studies um, here in the show notes that we will provide. Um, Another great one was how the polyphenols, so the colors that are in the fruits and vegetables naturally. There's a great study that showed that the polyphenols decreased glucose uptake by the human intestinal uh, barrier, which is amazing. So just not just not the fiber, which we always assume, the, the actual polyphenols, the antioxidants of the fruit, um, and that's an incredible incredible study that kind of caught me off guard. Uh, Others, there's another study that also showed polyphenols and the phenolic acids from strawberries and apple decrease glucose uptake and transport by the human intestinal area. So these are fascinating studies. Okay, so, so the bottom line is with whole fruit eating, um, there is only benefit to eating whole fruit uh, consumption and not to mention the most life-giving food you can eat um, picked fresh and and if you are juicing um, I would keep the fiber juice it blend it don't worry about it and just get that life-giving fruit in your body okay so um, now listen 
uh, like one of the questions said, like, hey, I want to, you know, maintain my weight. So if you're juicing things, you can consume more calories without even knowing it. And so I would, again, go to whole fruit eating. Um, and usually you can tell that cut off a lot easier. You, you just don't like, I very rarely eat two apples in a row, right? Like I said, I ate a small watermelon and then that was it. And then I ate, you know, a peach and a plum. And then I hit that level and your body kind of knows you can't over consume, Con you can't over consume these things. But when we turn to ultra process created food to to hijack our taste buds, our our mechanisms for consumption through salt, fat, and uh, processed sugar, then we override and consume infinitely more calories. Okay, so so when you stick to nature, um, it knows what to do. Um, but we are getting all of this information from the ultra processed world. And then, you know, many health experts, quote unquote, are saying all fruits bad, all sugars bad. That is absolutely not true. And it's not not true what the studies show. In fact, it's the opposite. Okay, the next question is honey bad for us. Okay, so there's so much to say about honey. Number one, I'm not getting paid for this, but the best honey and the most quality assured honey on the market is Beekeepers Naturals because they have they have more than just the honey. They have the super elixirs of of everything of what's going on in the honey. And in fact, um the propolis which is incredible um and so on and so forth um there's many different things to look for local honey raw unfiltered honey um but but this day and age uh, look for ask for um pesticide herbicide residue test and beekeepers beekeepers naturals definitely does that we need to be aware of the fatal convenience of this stuff. Commercially bought honey in a plastic bottle, just no, it's a, just a no-go. You're, you're almost guaranteed the bees weren't taken care of that well. And in fact, if you beekeep correctly, you can actually help them thrive more. And um, you'll have all of the constituents in there without the negative side effects. So... Um, again be you know you know i'm i'm a plant-based guy and many vegans won't touch honey and i get that but if you do this well no it's not killing the bees it's it's a compartment another kind of compartment in the bee so it's not their normal stomach and they vomit it um and so when I understand like something like Beekeepers Naturals and how they support the bees and test everything and the powerful nutrient value of honey, I'm fine with it myself. Um, but I won't buy commercial honey. I don't go out of my way to consume honey, but medicinally, I choose it as a superfood. So when I need to use it, I use it. I buy the... Um, the pollen when I need to, I buy the propolis, propolis when I need to, and I always have kind of honey around because it it's the preservation is infinite. Okay, so um, now there's a bunch of you know I'm gonna look at the health effects of unrefined honey. If you refine it, it's a completely different, and a lot of it is unregulated and potentially cut with high fructose corn syrup. And there's a lot of negative effects on that. And we, we know that it's the Wild West out there. So you have to be aware, just like you're buying your produce, be, be, be aware of where your honey's coming from and, and who is cultivating that honey. So here was an a interesting study that I'll kind of walk myself into 
um, the health benefits and maybe the challenges of consuming honey. So there was a lipid profile in healthy adults. This was a randomized controlled trial and it compared effects of honey and sucrose, um, one of the strains of sugar, on lipid profiles in healthy young adults. Honey consumption decreased total cholesterol, triglycerides, and uh, LDL while increasing HDL. That is absolutely the direction you want. So imagine taking an unrefined honey uh, and it actually having powerful benefit uh, effects on you. Whereas the sucrose, the isolated sucrose, had the opposite adverse effects on all of these parameters. So again, we demonize sugar, but in what form it can have the almost opposite. And this was a randomized controlled trial. And to be fair, uh, there was another study. I couldn't find the quality of them, so I'm not sure if the honey was refined. I'm not sure the quality of it, but there was a study comparing honey, sucrose, and high fructose corn syrup which is nasty and gnarly and you don't even want to consume that, um, found that all three sweeteners produce similar effects on glucose, insulin, lipid metabolism, and inflammatory markers over 14 days. Both, both glucose-tolerant and intolerant individuals experienced increased triglycerides. So in this study, there was some compromised individuals already so their effect of consuming, so, you know, we are biochemically individuals. So if you're pre-diabetic, if you have underlying conditions, this consuming a whole bunch of honey may be detrimental for you and not so great. Again, I don't have eyes and I, I couldn't find the quality of the honey. They're just calling it honey. So I don't know because we now know that when you have active constituents in food and in fruit or the polyphenols or th those things play a factor in the me metabolic conditions. So um, in this study, it showed that it had um, detrimental effects on lipid metabolism and increased in inflammation. So consult your doctor, see where you're at, all of those things. So uh, another study showed that honey had potential anti-diabetic effects. How crazy is that, right? In a preclinical and some clinical studies, it showed it reduced blood glucose levels more effectively than common sugar. Now, that I would also see by way of seeing and reading some of the other studies also appears that they have more favorable impact on glycemic, glycemic control and metabolic uh, derangement. So in this study, it seemed like more of a healthy um, adult population and it actually, honey had beneficial uh, results. So honey containing, another uh, study, honey containing various bioactive compounds such as phenolic acids, flavonoids, enzymes, which unrefined honey does, uh, contributes to health effects. So similar to the benefits of whole fruit with the polyphenols and the antioxidants, similar to that of unrefined honey with the flavonoids and the, the phenolic compounds and the antioxidants, these compounds are not, iso are not found in isolated sugars or super refined honey or at least in very low levels. So the honey's glycemic index varies widely based on what kind of honey it is. And, in, and when it provided high amounts of antioxidants, antimicrobial activities, it actually had all of these other anti-inflammatory benefits, et cetera, et cetera. So again, if we just say something sugar, nothing is in nature is reduced, right? It's a complexity. So, you, you know, we as simple humans want to reduce things down to just this thing. So, therefore, I'm not going to eat sugar. I'm not going to eat fruit. I want to lose weight. But 
that's that's the wrong way to look at it okay so there's a lot of other stuff going on another study showed that honey has been shown to lower another lowering glycemic impact compared to straight glucose and sucrose and its long-term consumption can reduce very interesting fasting glucose levels in both healthy and diabetic individuals boom wow this effect is attributed to the presence of the natural form of fructose and the other bioactive compounds in the honey come on and this study is in the show notes so if you want to dive into that you certainly can so many studies i'm pausing there because there's there's 10 others scientific evidence suggests that honey has several health benefits over isolated added sugars so it is a complex beautiful superfood it's whole it's complete it's nature hell it probably has coding of of frequencies that the bees are humming they know that the beekeepers are some of the longest living people in the world because they're around maybe because they're consuming the honey but they're around this harmonic that the bees always gives off i don't know that's my that's my fascinated fascination in the frequency world but it shows that uh, the the isolated sugar is infinitely different than the honey uh this includes better glycemic control obviously improves lipid profiles in several studies and the additional antioxidants clearly uh, and anti-inflammatory processes is due uh, to the complexity of the composition of this honey honey can be considered the healthier alternative obviously to an isolated added sugar so if you're sitting there you're about to have a tea or your coffee and and whatever it is that you're consuming if you have i still am not a fan of you know you know i would still monk fruits my number one because you're not adding anything but but if i have an unrefined beautiful honey i'm not afraid of that at all in fact it's beneficial sometimes i'll just take a spoonful um because I don't even want to put it in the thing, in the tea or whatever. But this is a great way to get superfoods into your life. The, life. This is, this is helping metabolic health and conditions. And ultimately, the bottom line is reducing risk and chronic disease. And it's a superfood. It's not out to har- harm you. Uh, there's populations in the world that still consume ninety percent of their calories, all from honey. So. The, the answer is in its complexity, just like life, right? It's not one thing we do. It's many things that we do. It's not one pill. It's not one food. It's not one perception. It's not one action. It's multiple actions, multiple bites, multiple complexities of whole healthy food uh, as it relates to how you're eating uh, when you're eating, uh, life is f- full and complex, and so is nature. And you just think of nature putting together these complex, powerful constituents and plants, and we get to consume that. And it is one of the most life giving things we can do for ourselves, from my point of view. Okay? Thanks for the questions, everyone. Please like, subscribe, share it with your friends your family, your loved ones. And remember, I love you.